and welcome again to this uh, SimSolid webinar. Uh, we will be going through SimSolid live presentation and also recorded presentation from one of our customers, Don Burr, to give you an idea how they have implemented SimSolid. So briefly, I want to talk a little bit about SimSolid because it is a one of a kind of FEA. It's different, very different actually from all the traditional FEA softwares which we are familiar with. I will then go with a live demonstration showing mainly welded and bolted connections and see how SimSolid handles the workflows and processes. And then we have a recorded presentation from, from Don Burr uh, about 15 minutes, well, 12 to 15 minutes, showing a little bit about how they have implemented uh, SimSolid within their organization. And you will see some examples from their clients. And then hopefully we'll have some time. If you have any questions, please uh, type them in and we will go to the question and answers towards the end. I anticipate the presentation to take almost 30 minutes and we'll have about 10 minutes or so afterwards for any questions you may have. So. Just to give me an idea of what the audience is already using, we have a very short poll. It's just uh, three or four questions, just to give you an indication of what software you are currently using. So let's just, okay, so you'll see the poll. We simply give me an indication of what software you are currently using. Excellent, so we have primarily, got so if I close this and you can see what is happening here. Okay, so I'm gonna share the poll to just to give an idea of what the audience is using currently. So you can see we have most customers using the Autodesk uh, portfolio and so some SolidWorks and other softwares, which may be Abacus, ComSol, or any other, but I did expect a lot of people to be using Imagine Inventor Nastran, so thank you very much for that. Right, SimSolid uh, is not like traditional softwares where you have to simplify geometry in order for the thing to be meshed because mesh is one of the biggest stumbling blocks for any FEA software where we have to make it somewhat simpler. Uh, if we don't make it simpler, then we're going to have problems with meshings and the beauty. And this can take a, a fair amount of time depending on the complexity of your models. Now with SimSolid, you simply take the geometry as it is uh, you can export it as a parasolid, step files, or you can even open the inventor files or solid work files and open it inside SimSolid as it is. And it doesn't need uh, to be simplified for various reasons. The biggest reason is that SimSolid doesn't require a mesh, which is very hard to believe because I've spent my lifetime uh, educating customers like yourselves where you have to mesh, mesh, and mesh, and this is the other extreme. So a little bit hard to uh, digest, but that is the big difference. Hence the reason why we don't need to simplify because it doesn't require a mesh. Now, what you see here is the common stumbling blocks, uh, which can create possible uh, headaches, if that's the right word, uh, for our analyses, especially in Nastran and maybe perhaps in SolidWorks and ANSYS, where if you have geometries which have parts, uh, gaps and overlaps, small geometry features when you have complex assemblies where you have thin parts and, and thick parts. And, and also down here, the transitions, this one here, where you have very sharp little features, it can create a lot of headache. And typically what normally happens uh, in the workflows, we have to go through some sort of geometry simplification feature or part suppressions. Or in the extreme case, you may decide it's a lot easier to simply represent a, the geometry as a simple geometry, so you end up doing it again. And depending, again, uh, on your designs and models, the timing can be from uh, half an hour or so to a couple of hours to days, depending on how complex it is. Now, the beauty is SimSolid is very forgiving, and it can handle all these uh, without any headache. Now, I will show you an example which will have some overlaps so SimSolid doesn't actually care. Now before I go into the specifics now obviously we are aware that customers are already using uh, simulation softwares primarily Autodesk and obviously SolidWorks we do not anticipate that we want customers to replace so this is basically a, a solution which is complementary to what you're already doing but on the on the 
positive side, it is a very comprehensive software. It does a lot what your current softwares do between linear and non-linear, material properties and connections. I'm not going to go into too much details because what I'm going to focus on is this. So when we approach customers like yourselves, obviously we are aware and we have trained yourself on Nastran on SolidWorks. We do not want you to replace it. Uh, so where is the biggest benefits of this? Now, one of the applications is complex models. These could be, uh, for example, 3D generated parts uh, or additive manufacturers. And something like this is almost impossible uh, to analyze in uh, traditional softwares like Nastran, SolidWorks, and ANSYS because of the complex details. So if you are involved in 3D printing, obviously the future is towards that. Uh, lattice structures, organic structures, uh, generative design is the other one uh, you may be familiar with in the Autodesk portfolio. If parts have been generated as a generative design, SimSolid can handle that. Now, the other most common application is large scale models. This is the primary application for customers and clients like yourselves to take on SimSolid. SimSolid is designed to handle super large models which can take hours and days to set up and analyze in SimSolid. Uh, it could be as complex as you want it to be. I have seen some great examples which I thought could never be handled in Nastran, for example, but in SimSolid, it can be set up and run pretty quickly. Uh, now, this is the example, well, uh, I'm going to focus the session today on webinars on bolted connections and welded connections. Uh, obviously, uh, if you have been using Nastran or SolidWorks, uh, the softwares handle it differently. For example, whether people include welds or not is not so simple. And if you've got bolted connections, can you remake use of bolted connections? I'm a pretty f familiar with Nastran. I don't think you can do eight of them. And finally, you'll be amazed, maybe Gosmat or paranoia of how fast it does it and how does it do it. The software runs very, very quickly. Uh, and you'll see that when I go to the presentation. Okay, so just before we go into the uh, the presentation of the uh, the model I'm going to use in SimSolid, I just want to get an idea again uh, whether what type of details you would include in your analyses or for example, if your designs include bolted connections or welded connections. So let's just have a look at the next poll. This just gives me an idea of how to sort of emphasize more or little depending on the audience here. Okay, we've got about almost 80% vote here. So let's just uh, share the results. So you can see here we have a mixed bag. So we have bolted connections, we have welded connections, and we also classify thin structures. This is something where you have a material which has a, like a one millimeter thick to 30 millimeters length ratio or higher. Okay, so before I go through the live air example uh, to give you an idea of how SimSolid works, these are all the file types which SimSolid can actually uh, use and open. Uh, you can see here we can open Katia files, Inventor files, SolidWorks, Pro Engineer, the most common uh, software CADs use out there, or we can use the CAD ne neutral file formats like uh, Parasolids, Step, STLs. So the example I'm going to uh, go through in the next 10 minutes or so is a pull bar. And in this example here, I'm going to emphasize how SimSolid handles welder connections and how it handles uh, bolts and nuts, which have already been modeled inside your CAD software. And we can make reuse of them and how it creates uh, special connections, which combines bonded contacts and sliding automatically and how it handles overlaps. So we'll show you there's some overlaps here you can see in the slide. So what we'll do now is I'm just going to have a look at the model now. So I'm going to sh share my screen. Just let me know. Thank you very much. OK, so this is the SimSolid interface. Uh, there is no hidden buttons. Everything you see is there. Uh, I know some softwares will have extra commands and features. SimSolid basically is what you see uh, on the ribbon bar. And I'm going to open a file here. Now, the file I'm going to open is the pull bar, and you can see it's a CAD neutral file format. That's the uh, option I'm going to use. But you can see here, you can open Inventor Files and also SolidWorks down here as well. So I'm going to open this file here. Okay, 
it helps if I highlight it. Okay, so every time you bring in the uh, a assembly, whether how does matter how big or how small it is, you're gonna get a, a dialog box like this, giving you uh, some suggestions that some of the parts in this assembly are basically have overlaps. So I'm gonna press OK on here, and then simply let's have a look. Where, so this is the overlaps. So let's pick one of these. Uh, no, let's pick this one here. It's about three millimeter overlap uh, and it's between these parts here. So that is most likely the hole is not big enough in the plate. So you could go back into Inventor or CAD software, whatever CAD software you are using and go and actually make the hole uh, bigger so that you don't have any overlaps. But in here, we don't need to worry about this. If I look at something else, it's not too bad here. What's this one here? This is between the, the box section here and and the bolt itself so we've got some overlaps so i'm not i'm going to ignore these for a moment okay so the next dialog box which comes up uh, is about how to create contacts and this create contact automatically but the normal typical workflow here is that if you are going to create welds then you need to create the welds before you use this automatic connection so i'm going to cancel this and let's just get into view so I can select the wells. Now in here, connections, you can, so we have automatic connections. You can create them manually. Then you can have spot or laser wells, seam wells, and you can create adhesive connections. And then you have special connectors, uh, bushings, rivets. So you have a whole host of connectors here. We're gonna concentrate on the wells. So I'm gonna create a new seam weld here. And what you can do here is you can pick the size of the weld. Then you can also pick the, the minimum length. If the length is less than 12 mil, it won't create the weld. So I'm going to change that to three as well. You can create intermittent welds along an edge. So you have different options here to create welds. I'm going to pick on group weld. So I'm going to draw, uh, okay. So I'm going to do a window selection on this side here and this side here. And then, uh, I mean, I can carry on, but let's just have to find the welds. And if I press OK and zoom in, you can see it has created welds between the plates. So if I repeat the command again, <clears throat> this time I'm going to create a welds between these plates and the tube. So pick that one and the tube. You can see how the items are being populated in the list. And then when I press find wells here again, the red means it's highlighted. So if I go through here, you can choose, if you don't want extra wells, you can simply right hand click on that or press delete here. So I'm happy with the wells. And then also if I change the color of this here, you can see every single color there. Some I have created some wells already in my CAD geometry. Uh, in this version of the software, we can actually pick them wells as well, them geometries are as wells. So that's what I'm gonna do here. And you can see here, weld from solid. So we're just gonna go and pick these. Two, three, four, five. And the other option is you can pick edges. So let's do that again, find wells, there we go. So now we have created all the wells. We can carry on, but I'm happy with the wells so far. And what you can also do here is you have the, also the choice to specify a different material for the wells. So I'm going to go in here. I'm just going to give an example. I'm going to pick this one from the list as long as it's, as long as it's different and apply to all the wells. The next stage here is now we can go back to my automatic connections down here. And let's just make that one and one. And the important part here is that to connect this little button here, because wherever there's a well between two parts, it's not going to create a contact there. And I'm going to press OK. And we should have the connections in here. Now, the one thing I want to show you here is if I pick, let's pick uh, that part there. Right hand click and click on connections. And there you see there, 
there is no connection between the tube. If I put the tube there, it's the only connections are the welds. There's no contacts there. So this is just to show you that wherever there's weld connections, it's not going to create extra contacts. Uh, now, if I click on, uh, let me just now. I'm going to first of all use linear option. You can do non-linear here, but the most typical applications or common applications we expect for our clients is linear. Now, if I pick on that bolt there, right hand click in here, contact conditions, you can see here something like Nastran, for example, uh, is that you would have to go in every single connection type and change it from a bonded default contact to sliding or separation. Now, within SimSolid, it's very clever. Uh, it basically creates a bonded contact between the bolt and the nut because of the thread in there, and then it creates a bonded contact by default with the plate and the rest of them in the holes, they're all sliding as you can see. But if you want to change them, you simply highlight the one you want to change and then you can have these special contacts down here. But we leave it as bonded. So that's one thing I like about SimSolid, it creates the contacts uh, where you don't have to go and modify everything, it's everything is preset. So now we've got all the connections set. The next thing we're going to do here is we're going to go and create the constraints. Now, obviously, in um, using the example of the last one is because that's what I'm familiar with. Uh, if you want to check the reaction forces, then what happens is you then have to uh, pick it up. What happens is you have to create separate constraints, but in SimSolid you can pick as many phases as you want, and then you have the ability to check the reactions on each individual phase, which I'll show you in a moment. And then if you want to apply a load on a certain portion of the tube here, then you have to go and create a split phase in your CAD software, so you can pick it, and at the moment it's picking the whole tube, for example, but that's not what I want. So I'm gonna go in here, pick on force. And another unique thing I like about SimSolid is you can create a spot face, a bit like a split. You define the region where you want to apply the load, for example. Let's go here. Then you drag it wherever you want it. So let's say about here. That's okay, that's a split. And we're gonna put a force in the minus Z direction. And then if I zoom in here, you'll see it is only applied on the top portion of the tube. So let's go back and do the same thing on the other side. So this saves you a lot of headache trying to go into a CAD software and start splitting faces everywhere. And let's drag that somewhere approximately around here. And I'm not sure what I did at the 1000. I think 1000 is fine. Let me just check what did I put there. Yes, okay. So I think we're almost ready to run, so let's have a look. Uh, we have the materials assigned. Ah, I forgot to assign the materials, but if I press on the button here, it tells me I've not assigned any materials. So would you like to run it? No, so I'm gonna go back in here and everything else is gonna be steel applied to all the parts. And now we can go into my structure. And now the thing I want to show you here is that uh, if you're familiar with SolidWorks and Nastran or ANSYS, uh, when you create a mesh, then you've got to go through a, a mesh refinement process. You go through three mesh changes. Now, by default, SimSolid goes through adapt for stiffness, will go through three iterations, adapt for stress, where you want interesting stress results, go through five iterations. And if you want to do custom, you can see here we can pick and choose how many iterations you want to run. So this will change the res change. Well, it, it run it four times, six times, five times. And that's the thing you got to watch out, uh, which I think is unique. So it's not doing one simulation, it's doing multiple simulations. And you'll see it down here in the left-hand corner. When I run this, it goes to pass one, pass two, and pass three. And there you go, and there's the results. So what we can do here is click on displacement. Let's hide the boundary conditions. If I zoom in here, this is displacement results. And the one thing I like about this is you can create bookmarks. So I want to see this view here. That's my displacements around here. If I zoom out here, and what we can do here is let's look at stress results. 
change the plot to 100 and then you create another bookmark and then what we can do here is we can do an animation and then create another bookmark and you can rename these but I'll leave them as they are so you can flick between the bookmarks and then when you look at different comparisons between different results then you can use these bookmarks so what we're going to do now here is I'm going to make a change. So for example here, the plates had a bonded contact between them. And one thing I like here in SimSolid is going there, it gives you a, a little list of all the bolts in your models and gives you actual forces. And you can go which one it is. So it's about 50 and 100. So let's close that one for a moment. I'm going to copy the simulation here. And what we're going to do here is we're going to do something special here. I'm going to pick on this one. I'm going to review the part contact condition. See, it's bonded. When I pick the two parts, it's bonded. OK, I don't want that one. So that's bonded as well. So let's pick that one, that one, and that one. See, they're all bonded. So I'm going to change all these to separating. So not we don't want to pick structural two, that's the one we're going to compare. You can put friction there, but I'm going to leave it frictionless. And we're simply going to run this again. Okay, I forgot to do that. Uh, because uh, separating is a nonlinear contact, we have to go and change the setup to separating contacts. And now if I run that, So this takes a little bit longer. So obviously we're not sure whether it's gonna make any difference, but it may make a difference on the bolted connections. So I'm going to here, let's try this one here. That's one, that's the first one. And that's the second result, small change. Not a lot of detail here. So that's the, you can see I'm flicking between the two results. But the one I'm gonna show you here, I'm looking at my second result. I'm going to my bolted connections. Now you see there, we almost got more actual stresses here because actual forces because the bolts are taking more. So you can do these things. You can carry on as well. Uh, you can also do one one more thing I'm going to do here very quickly. Uh, you can apply bolt preloads. You can either put a th uh, so you can do here because I've got a bolt and a nut. What you can do here is pick on the bolt, all four of them. You can specify the pitch, let's say 0 0.1. You can specify the turn, half a turn. You can specify torque or tangent actual forces, a bit like Nastran. So I'll keep it as that. And let's run that one again. With the separating contacts. And, and let's play the animation. Once I've got some results, you'll see there, there's, there's a bolt preloads, and then you can also do the same thing again on your if I press stop here. Now you've got a lot more actual forces on your bolts, you can see here. The other thing I like about this, it's uh, just almost finished, so I want to show you Don my presentation here is this reactions. You can see the, there you go, you can see reactions individually. And you can also see the reactions on the wells, forces and moments on the wells as you go through all, every single one of them and all the connections. Okay, so I hope that's giving you some sort of indication of, of what uh, SimSolid workflow is about. But I want to just go through the Don Burr presentation, which is I want to see how they have adapted. And you can see that. So, uh, okay, just one more last poll. Let's, let's try this one very quickly. I'm curious to see how long you spend, guys, on your models. Okay, we almost got 60% of the votes. If you are posting the questions, guys, just give me till the end of the presentation. I'll have a look at while the Domber presentation is happening. I think we've got 75% of the votes here. So I'm going to close it and I'm going to share. And you can see typically uh, the time required to do something like this. Obviously, uh, what I mean, you could compare, I mean, something like I've done here, I'm not sure how long you would spend doing that in Nastran, SolidWorks, or Abacus, but I think it would be a lot uh, longer than what I have demonstrated. Again, thank you very much for showing that. The presentation is about 10 minutes, guys. Hello, everyone. Uh, this is a, a brief overview of our experiences with uh, SimSolid. 
really aimed at those working in a, an engineering based industry. Uh, we really like the software, so uh, we feel that this is very worthy. Um, just really firstly, a bit about us, just to give everyone a, a better idea of who we are and what we aim to achieve. It's a, a family run business that comes from a humble, humble background. Our early roots reach back to 1963. And in 1981, Donald Burden, uh, one of the management team at uh, Welford Truck Bodies, carried out a management buyout and formed uh, the current day Don Burr. Since then, we've evolved several arms of the business to continue driving forward uh, with clear purpose. So from a, a company history point of view, uh, we started off really with, with 18 acres. Uh, sorry, started off in 1981 with four acres and about 70 staff. Um, today, uh, we're operating on 18 acres just at one particular manufacturing site. Uh, we have about 550 strong uh, flexi work uh, workforce across the group, uh, which includes uh, four sites. Uh, we currently turn over about 50 million pounds, um, some variation year on year, but that's uh, the average at the moment. Um, the area in green that you see on the, the right hand side of the uh, map here represents some uh, land that we are now redeveloping uh, and are looking to to expand the, the site by uh, another six acres so really in terms of the group um, Dombo actually incorporates not only the manufacturing um, division but we also include our own uh, graphics house uh, including the ability to, to print curtains print banners uh, any large format graphics uh, at all um, we also offer, uh, we've got two uh, service divisions, one of which specifically aimed at um, double deck servicing, but we do uh, standard MOTs. Uh, we provide regular servicing for various different fleets throughout the country. Uh, we even manufacture our own curtains, um, which is quite a, a rare thing to do, uh, including load restraint uh, so, uh, components as well and solutions. Uh, we, have our own, we have our own parts division. Um, so we provide really uh, a complete service to our particular customer client base, uh, which provides a lot of convenience. So we have uh, now quite an enviable um, client base, as you can see, and to a large degree, we're providing solutions that allow our clients to compete with their competitors. It's not a, not a case of providing a, a one-suits-all solution. Um, it's looking at opportunities really to evolve, improve, uh, anything that we can do really to help our clients boost their business. Certainly in terms of the way that we achieve that, um, the, the vast majority of that is through innovation. Um, so just looking at this innovation chart or, or certainly our patent history over the, the last uh, couple of decades, um, we've been quite significant in the industry in terms of our uh, benefits um, going all the way back to 1986 uh, we invented ratchet decks uh, we we were the original inventors of lifting decks and continue to dominate the marketplace um, number of different items on there that really stand out as well the teardrop trailer uh, which was a particularly significant time in our company history back in 2007 uh, and was recognized by the government and uh, and the, the right honorable gordon brown at the time as it as it was um, going through to the the current day uh, with patents now outstanding for lifting roofs uh, on trailers so it's it really is a case for us about developing and and uh, trying to re almost reinventing the wheel to see exactly what we can do to make things better. So from that point of view, design is is everything to Dombo. Uh, we successfully forge our way by following a, a very simple mantra, um, design and engineer to build. Um, it, it's a mantra that served us very well. Certainly simulation is used extensively by our engineering team um, to ensure that the products are going to exhibit outstanding performance. Until around uh, two years ago, we were predominantly using the, the simulation capabilities within SolidWorks, which did a good job of giving us insight into our designs and where problems might occur. The, the problem that we were having was that while SolidWorks performed well, it could be extremely slow to get the CAD model ready for a simulation run. The, the team would regularly spend a lot of time um, tweaking models, 
uh, submitting them for analysis and then for SOLIDWORKS to throw up an error, uh, which meant more manually editing before we could try it all over again. Um, once we had a model set up and ready to go, the analysis time itself could also be quite long, even on our most powerful machines, again, slowing us down. The engineering team was therefore keen to explore other alternatives uh, to help speed up this process so that we could investigate and improve designs further and quicker. So SimSolid, uh, we became aware of SimSolid um, through other uh, means and we were quite keen to try it out. Um, but we were in all fairness quite wary of some of the claims being made about the speed and accuracy. Um, the, the, the team's first impressions of the tool was um, just disbelief really. So we went through a, a rigorous trialing process, putting it up against our existing solution. Um, and the results were quite surprising. So here as, a, as an example, we see an underarm bar or what most people might know as a bumper. And it's an example where our design team would um, test out the, the stresses and the strains of impacts um, and twists in the chassis. When we look back at our previous way of working to assess performance in SOLIDWORKS, we were really looking at uh, probably about half a day to set up the model and work through any error messages thrown up by the software, uh, followed by another maybe two, three hours for the runtime itself. But if you compare that to SimSolid, we're looking at about 30 to 60 minutes to set up the model and then about 20 seconds to run the analysis. So it is a, a huge difference in productivity for the team. Uh, I've actually got a, a quick demonstration on SimSolid on this part now. So I'll hand over to Martin Haynes now to show it. OK, with SimSolid then, uh, we can import a variety of native CADs. Uh, and once the model's in, we can quickly orient uh, the view that we desire. We can easily interrogate the model and check for any geometry defects uh, coming in as well. So SimSolid also comes with a pre-populated material database. Now this is easily editable um, and you can share it as well uh, within Teams so you can easily add your own custom materials to it. Uh, as well as this, views can also be saved. So let me just uh, move this slightly uh, and then I can create a new view and uh, store it here to come back to you later. So once I've done that, I can create my connections automatically. Uh, so SimSolid does a search, automatically generates all the connections. Uh, and then I can go in here and review them uh, as I see fit. Uh, and I can pull up a table as well uh, and quickly cycle between the different contacts. So I get a good view of the contact there. Um, and again, brilliant. Uh, so now I've got my connections. Uh, what I might want to do next then is create the load case. So I'll make a linear in this case, although we can do nonlinear. Uh, and I can very quickly set this up. And you can see the connections have all come through automatically. Um, again, I can review these. I can change the, the connection condition. Um, if I wanted to, from something like bonded to uh, a sliding or separating nonlinear contact. Uh, and we've got loads of cool tools to, to review those contacts as well. Just cycle through some of these options here. Cool, so I'm happy with my uh, contacts. Uh, now I can set up my load case. Um, and because SimSolid works on on the geometry, as you can see here, I can just directly pick the faces and it will automatically create the constraints on it. So I don't need to do anything else. I'm working directly on uh, the CAD. So I'm just going to fix all of these uh, holes. Just a couple more. Perfect. Uh, so you can see now I've got the little yellow symbol indicating my uh, constraints been made. 
So once my model's constrained, one of the things that's really useful to do is run a, a rigid modes check like that, um, just to make sure that everything is connected up uh, as it should. So now I'm just going to go back to my previous view. Uh, and in cases where I don't want to apply it um, to a specific geometry feature, uh, I actually want to apply it in a, a specific location on that geometry feature, uh, I can use the spot tool here. So I can just create a spot on the end and apply a, a force in the X direction. So you can see that on screen now. So I'm just going to run it and uh, as you can see the, the results are generated lightingly quick. Um, and there's a whole range of plots so I can plot uh, von Mises stress. Uh, again I can change the view, I can animate these results. Um, I can show the max displacement, I can create bookmarks, uh, and I can interrogate specific locations on the model as well, which we'll see here. So now I'm just going to animate it, and again I can store uh, an animation as a bookmark as well. And I can jump between these two, uh, I can also save them out as images, uh, which can be useful for, for sort of report writing. So this then is the, the pick tool I alluded to, so I can pick a specific part, a specific point on my model and extract all the relevant data there. And that again can be saved out as a CSV, uh, much like I can do with this tool as well. So in this case, I can plot how my results vary uh, along the length of the section. Cool, so I hope you've enjoyed that. That's just a simple linear one, um, but by being able to use SimSolid like this, um, not just on a simple component here, but on large scale assemblies, uh, really has dramatically improved the, the time it takes uh, to go through these design cycles. Uh, and we can see that we can get better insight earlier into our designs by, by implementing SimSolid. Thank you for that, Martin. As you can see, SimSolid is really, really quick in getting our design team some uh, insight into this particular component. Using SimSolid in our design process is, is really helping us to save a lot of time um, throughout the development process, process by providing design guidance in really, really incredibly fast times. Um, this, this is really a couple more examples where we're using SimSolid. And you can see that we're, we're able to set these up, uh, run them and get meaningful results really quickly which helps our engineering team to try out new ideas uh, really, really quickly. Thank you for your time. Uh, and I hope that this gives some insight to others who may be considering software platforms for simulation. Okay, I hope you found the, the video uh, presentation useful. Uh, I hope you can still hear me. So just gonna, we're running out of time, so I'm just gonna go through uh, the next slides pretty quickly. So. One thing we found out uh, to work is that obviously some of the examples will be probably very much detailed and complex. So what we ask for, if you're interested to put SimSolid through its paces and you will have, want to have a look at your own examples, we ask if you send us a, a, a parasolid type format, it's because the file size is single file size, it's smaller than your traditional event and solid work files, some, some boundary conditions, and then we will present the solution back to you live and then you can see how fast uh, and how quick it can generate the setup and results times compared to what you would use with Nastrans if that's if you're interested and if some companies find their models and designs are uh, confidential then we are happy to sign an NDA if you would like to uh, uh, find some further information about SimSolid we did some webinars last year they are pre-recorded uh, and you can go through uh, the different types of webinars. One of the favorite one is the results are correct. So we go through that portfolio. We compare it with Nastran and ANSYS. So you can go have a look at these videos. There's the two links at the bottom of the slide towards Symmetry and Altair if you want to have a look at uh, to, uh, and learn a little bit more about SimSolid. Uh, on which we don't have a great amount of time. I have tried to answer some of your questions as you had posted them, but if you can, if you want to, I can hang around for a couple more minutes to see if you've got any more questions. If you would like to get in touch with me directly with your questions, my contact details are there also. So I'm going to hang fire for a couple of minutes. Uh, is it a network license or standalone? It's a network license, it's a multi user, so any one person in your company can use the software. 
I think the other question I had there, can you use linear and non-linear materials? You can use them both. And the other question is, does it do a buckling? Yes, it does non-linear buckling inside uh, SimSolid. Okay, I have another requirement here is, uh, what is the PC requirements compared to ANSYS? Now, obviously I'm pretty familiar with ANSYS. Now, because the software runs super quick, uh, it, can, it does, I don't think, the PC requirements are dictated by SimSolid, it's dictated by your CAD software. It's not like ANSYS or the, uh, the high-end softwares where you need to use HPC clusters, multiple GUIs and multiple cores. I've never, I've seen some models in here which it uses all the cores by default. So I've never come across anything where, where PC is a limitation for SimSolid. I'm still paranoid on how quick it does it anyway in the first place. Thank you very much. Uh, if you were uh, one more thing I would like to request uh, once this webinar closes, there is a short uh, survey. I would be grateful. Three quick questions should take less than a minute. If you could fill that in, I appreciate it. If you have any more questions you would like, uh, you can get in touch with me directly. And I hope you found the session very uh, useful for your type. And thank you very much for attending. Have a good day.